take it seriously. You need to take it seriously. When I was an undergraduate, I was in a class, and I'll just say the name of the class. It was a complex variables class. And I was really excited because in complex variables, you do a lot of calculus. And I love calculus. I was a rock star at taking derivatives. I was really fast. I was always very fast at mathematics. I've always been a very fast thinker. I have to force myself to slow down. Well, I studied for that first test. I was very excited. I thought I was going to do really, really well. And so I go to class the next day, and I see the teacher has like, you know, those yellow envelopes. And it's full of all the tests. And he looks kind of angry. The teacher was kind of a fun guy. I really liked him. I thought he was a great teacher. He was really hardcore, really hard. But he was kind of funny, and me and my friend used to like, you know, laugh and joke around during class. Probably not the, not the best thing to do, but it was a fun class. And he looked at us, and he told us that none of the math majors did well. He said only the engineers got A's. And he was pissed. He was angry. He looked at us and he said, you need to take it seriously. I got my test back, and I scored a 67%. I'm pretty sure it was a 67. So here I am, a math major. My GPA is like a 3.9 something. I want to go to grad school. You know, I can't have bad grades. You need to take it seriously. So what did I do? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I turned it around. And I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. It's just what I did. And it's pretty simple. So I was lost, right? I, I thought that the ones I got wrong, the questions I got wrong on the test, I thought they were right. They were like little short little proofs involving things with complex variables. And I knew how to write proofs at the time, but apparently I didn't. Right? I, I had some proof structure, but I just wasn't, you know, I wasn't where I am today. Right? That's good. I wasn't, wasn't nearly as good as I am today, right? So I was just learning. I was an undergrad. So my proof writing ability was not mature. It was not mature enough for the proofs in that class. I just wasn't good enough. And so I went back and I just redid everything I could, studied even harder for that class. Then I started going to my professor's office hours. I remember I went to his office and he explained some stuff and I didn't understand it. And then I asked him to explain again and I still didn't understand. And then I asked him again and then I just kind of pretended that I understood and then went on my way. It was just, I just couldn't get it. I felt defeated. I felt like I wasn't able to do it. Then I started collecting more math books, you know, looking at the Shams complex variables, doing extra problems. Fast forward to the second test, I think I got a B or an A. I was able to do it. So what was the secret? How was I able to do it? Well, I guess I just always had a really big goal, right? For me, college, I had to take it seriously. It's, it's what he said. You need to take it seriously. When he said that, I thought, he's right. He's right. Why am I going to fail this class? I want to get an A in complex variables. And, you know, from a 67 to an A, I don't think there was any, like, replacement of the lowest score. There wasn't much extra credit. Like, it was barely mathematically possible. I got an A in that class. Pretty sure I got an A on the final, possibly even 100% or very close to it. How? I worked like crazy. I took his advice. Th those words, you need to take it seriously. That's all he had to say. He probably doesn't know that those words had such an impact on my life. He probably doesn't even remember saying those words. You need to take it seriously. Life changing. Change my grade. Just like that. Simple, right? Sometimes that's all it takes to flip the switch. That's all it takes to get you going. 
when he said that to me, I knew that my life depended on my grade. I mean, I took college seriously, right? It was my number one priority. I was hyper-focused on success. And I think that no matter what you're doing in life, okay, no matter what you're studying or what you're trying to do, if you can give that something 100% of your concentration, there's a good chance you will succeed. And if you don't, it's okay. At least you tried. That's the thing, right? A lot of times people won't do things because they think they're going to fail. That's fine. You can quit. You've already failed. Is it bad? No, it's, it's your choice. But if you want something, if you really, really want something, you will work towards that thing and you will do everything you can to get that thing. You will work night and day to get it done. And you're going to get tired. You're not going to want to work. You're going to feel those moments where this sucks. And what's going to get you to work during those times is your relentless desire for your goal. If you really want something, you will take the steps to do it. And you can think about wanting something all day long, right? You can dream all day long. Dreams are free though. We can dream all day long. It's when you realize that you have to take action to make it happen. And I knew that this was my grade. I mean, no one's going to take the test for me, right? And there really wasn't a magical strategy that improved my performance from one test to the other. I just worked a lot harder. And that was a hard thing for me to imagine doing at the time because I felt like I worked so hard. I mean, I studied like crazy. I mean, I had already taken Calc 1, 2, 3, differential equations. I mean, I scored a perfect score on every test in differential equations. So here I am, the student who's used to getting A's, and all of a sudden I have a D. It's like boom. Some students break down. I've seen, I've seen students cry. You know, students who, who do really well and they're encountered with a hard class. I've seen them break down crying. I've, I've seen it. It's sad. I didn't cry, um, but I felt defeated. But I was able to pick myself up pretty quickly and tell myself, hey, I just need to work harder. And I think one reason I was able to do that, besides having a big goal and a big dream, is, you know, the teacher said the engineers got A's. I was like, engineers? Most of my friends in college were engineering students. That, that's a fact. Most of them were electrical engineering students because when I was in the calculus classes, all my friends, my circle of friends, they were all studying engineering, especially electricals. A lot of electrical engineers had some friends from India. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were awesome. They, were, they used to do homework on the floor. In any case, that's, that's another video. <laughs> they got jobs, though. They were smart. They worked hard, and they got jobs. And so they would always tell me, oh, math, math, you know. Oh, you should be an engineer. You're not going to make any money. They used to always try to push me to do engineering. They would say math is useless. And it's true. You make more money with an engineering degree, right? At least, at least to start. Right? Engineers, it's, it's a more in-demand in demand field. But I used to think, if they were getting A's, this is a math class. I'm a math major. Why am I not getting A's, right? And so I thought, if they can do it, I can do it, right? What the heck is this? And, and really, it was those words. You need to take it seriously. So if you're watching this video, and you're struggling with mathematics, and you've tried studying, and it just doesn't work, you need to take it seriously. Step it up. If you're sitting there, and you're frustrated, and you pick up a pencil, and you just can't do it, let me give you some tips. So first of all, a routine is something you can do. So I advise having a routine where you get up early every single day and you work on mathematics. That is my advice. Now, you can pick different times, but for the purposes of this video, if I have to pick one time, I'm going to say the morning. I think the morning is the best time for me and the best time for most people. Obviously, after coffee. <laughs> when you do something every day, every morning, it becomes like a behavior and then it becomes a routine. It's like a routine. And you get better at that thing. Another thing you should do is keep your eyes on the prize. Remind yourself 
why you're doing what you're doing so that when you don't want to work, you can find that motivation. If you find yourself filled with thoughts that are thoughts that are not what you're trying to work on, so for if you're thinking about your friends, your relationships, some TV show, something funny on YouTube, some stocks, whatever it is you're into, right, sports, whatever, and you want to focus on math, realize that you need to clear your mind. You can really only focus on one thing at a time, right? Really, the mind is meant to, to hyper-focus. People multitask, they talk about that, but your best work will come when you are 100% focused on what you're working on. So clear your mind. Realize that you have to push those thoughts out of your mind and focus on what's at hand. An easy exercise to get yourself to do this is to realize that in some sense there's only three states of mind, right? You can be thinking about something that has happened to you that's in the past, that's gone. You can be thinking about something that's going to happen to you, that's the future. And these are both good states to be in, right? It's good to reflect on the past. There are lessons to learn from studying history in school, right? I mean, it's important to know history. It's important to reflect on the past, learn from your mistakes. It's also important to dream and have hopes and think about the future. But it's very easy to get stuck in one of those two states because those states are easy to get stuck in because those states don't require a lot of effort. I mean, they might cause some pain and some anxiety thinking about the future, thinking about the fast, past, but action is what's going to determine your future. So you have to take action and action only occurs when you are in the present state of mind. So get up in the morning, have your coffee or your breakfast or whatever. If you don't eat early, that's fine, but whatever it is you do in the morning, do it until you're ready go for a walk, whatever it is you need to do before doing math. Do that, brush your teeth, whatever it is. Do your morning routine and do math ASAP every single day, okay? Make it a routine and you will get better. And this works for anything in life. Clear your mind, push out all those thoughts, hyper-focus, lock in. Really what I'm describing is just locking in. Lock into something and work on it. And that's what I would do. I would just lock in on what I was doing because to me that was the most important thing, right? You need to take it seriously. Sometimes people are doing too much. I want to make that point before I end this video because sure, I was able to come back from that bad grade in college, but I'm not perfect, okay? There were instances where I had to withdraw from classes. So I think we should discuss that. If, if you're in college and you're doing a lot, okay, step back. And by a lot, I mean, if you're taking like five classes and you have a full-time job, I personally think that's too much. I think that there's like this expectation of students and society somehow thinks it's okay and they accept this, that is too much. And I'm not saying, oh, you know, be easy on the students, it's weak. No, no, I think people are doing too much. I think students in college do too much. When I first started teaching college, I remember running into students. I remember my first semester, there was this girl and she was taking four classes and she worked at the school and then she took care of her sick mom and then she had another job. I was like, how do you even do it? And then she was trying to apply for honors. I'm like, it's just too many things, right? Pick a few things and focus on those most important things. Focus on the things that will help your life because your life matters more than anything, your future. So don't spread yourself too thin. I think a lot of people do that because, again, maybe just societal expectations have changed. You know, when I, when I started college, I was working and I immediately discovered that I wouldn't be able to do it, I wouldn't be able to perform like I wanted to perform and keep my job. So I quit my job and I went to school full time. And some people might say, well, that's good, but I have to work. I didn't work, I didn't, that's true. But I took out loans, right? And I was poor, so I was able to get financial aid. So yeah, I took out a bunch of debt. So that was my path. I'm not saying you should do that, but it's a path. And that's how I was able to really just focus on math, right? Just focus on school. I think that's the best way. Anyways, kind of a random video. I just wanted to make this because I was, I was reading an email I received from someone and their email was just very similar to my story. 
And I remembered that, that moment when that teacher looked at us and he said, you need to take this seriously. I remember looking there, sitting there with my test. I still have my test. I still have it. Pretty sure I know where it is. I have to find it. And I remember looking at that test and thinking, oh, I studied so hard. What an epic failure. And I was able to come back. But again, I wasn't always able to come back. Sometimes I withdrew from courses. You have to know what your upper limit is. You have to know what your, what your maximum capacity for work is to maintain a good grade. Because you can always overwork and get bad grades, right? You can take 10 classes and fail a bunch of them. You want to find what the sweet spot is. For me, it was three hard classes, three. I could do three hard classes in college and that was my upper limit. So as an example, um, partial differential equations, a proof-based linear algebra, complex variables. Fourth class, some fluff, super easy, whatever it is class. Unfortunately, it's harder to do that in the United States today. When I was in college, the rules for financial aid were different. So you could go to college, right, in the US, if you were poor, and you could take any course, and financial aid would pay for that. They changed those rules, I believe, where now financial aid in the United States will only help you if you're poor and, and uh, if the classes are for your major, which I don't really like because I feel that, and this is just my opinion, so I feel like college is not just a place where you go to improve your life. I mean, that's why I went to college, to improve my life, right? To, get a, to have a better life. But it's also a place where you become educated and you learn different things and you learn about the world and you learn about different points of view so that as an adult, when you're in the real world and you meet people and you see things on the internet, you can read them and think for yourself and think objectively, you know, not fall trapped to propaganda and things like that. It, just, it teaches you to think. It teaches you how to think. And the more you learn, the more you read, the more classes you take, math, 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 everything, the more educated you become, the more your mind starts to open up. And you just have to always keep an open mind and keep growing with it. I think that's, that's key. Try not to have a closed mind ever in life. So anyways, kind of a rant video. You need to take it seriously, right? You need to take it seriously. I just thought I would make this because, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that struggle. I struggled. I clawed my way back, and you can do it too. If you want to learn math, I have courses. They're on my website mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Actually, they're on Udemy, but if you get them, use the links from my website or from the description of any of my videos, including this one. I have courses on algebra, calculus, uh, differential equations, abstract algebra, advanced calculus, etc. You know, the key takeaway from this video is that, you know, it's hard for everyone and there's no real secret other than just getting it done. Hopefully after watching this video, you have some strategies that can help you get it done and get started and take charge of your life. Remember, it's your life. Take it seriously.